As we pointed out, you start with the design space, you know the bounds. The first thing that you want to do is do perform a design of experiment, get few points where you want to run your simulations or experiments. Okay. So, what is it that we try to do in this whole stuff? So, it is observing some pattern and trying to model it or replicate it, getting some simulation point, getting some experimental point. Okay. So, there are different ways of doing it. That is what the question is, how do you learn and improve? There are multiple ways. First one is to observe significant events. So, people always say right like you are not uh, designing for failure, you are actually designing against failure. So, you should focus on the failure part. Okay. When will my structures fail and what should I make sure that it will not fail? So, the significant event in this case is will be your failure part. <clears throat> the second one is your expert opinion, previous knowledge, legacy. Now, if you take uh, a company like Aether Energy which released its first electric vehicle a few days ago, they do not have a legacy, they do not have any legacy, they just started 5 years ago. What legacy would they have? Probably the vehicle that they released is their 10th prototype that is all. What, uh, what legacy will they have? They will not have any legacy. Okay. So, what they can do, they can rely is they can simulate the events. Okay. So, if you go to any of these car companies, today they have these simulation track, track simulation. Okay. It has all this, they call it a cobbler road. Okay. So, it has this gravel based roads okay. and your truck or your car has to go through that and they would have put, it, they would have instrumented the entire car starting from your, uh, you know, steering column to your, uh, 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 you know, your wheel differentials and what all you will look at. Okay. For instance, recently I learned that they even put a sensor on the, uh, for the noise. Okay, they do not want this chattering noise, ta, 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 ta. Oh, of course, it is related to the NVH issue, but they do not want that to propagate all the way up okay. and they even see by how much your suspensions are going because they know the, the landscape, they know where your vehicle is going, they want to understand by how much your suspension is reacting to that. Okay. So, uh, those are all beautiful. So, the point is I can simulate today, I do not have to wait for 100 years to create all the possible rare events, I can simulate the rare events today and that is exactly the third part. Okay. So, this is the advantage sometimes using a computer model that is what they say before bending the bar. You do not need to bend the bar anymore really, you can bend the bar in the computer and as many times as you want, but it is really not that easy. Sometimes when it becomes complex even computer models are expensive, they are less expensive than real experiments, but they are still expensive. Okay. And we have also moved to a situation where we call it digital twin. Okay. See about 20 years ago, uh, when you present a final element study, people ask what is the validation. Okay. Then people will immediately show a cantilever beam with known solution, they will use a mesh and then they will say this software is validated and then they will start their study. But today you just need to show only a mesh conversion study, that is all. Okay. To that extent, in 20 years we have developed confidence in the computer models. Please understand, your particular physical model you might not have confidence, but the software themselves we now have and we have gone to an extent of saying digital twin. This is my physical prototype, here is my computer prototype and this is the digital twin of your real stuff. So, whatever you do in this, it is equivalent of doing it in my experiment. So, I can crash this computer online on, on the computer and it is as good as crashing it physically. Okay. So, to that extent people have developed confidence. So, in that context only most of these things make sense. Okay. So, I can simulate the events. Okay. Learning by events and past knowledge is a slow process of course and people are still struggling to understand uh, how to import knowledge between, uh, I mean we sometimes uh, even in a systematic institute like ours when some staff, uh, not faculty, but one staff, uh, they are they usually stay at a place for 3 years or 4 years and after that they go to another department, right. So, still we have this issue of importing their knowledge into the next person because there is a systematic process, right. That is when workflow and all that comes into picture. It is not person dependent anymore. 
the person is only a data entry operation everything is recorded there otherwise they will say oh that person I remember you send the grades ok it is somewhere there. Now this email can be opened by everyone whoever has access can open the email and it is on record so so is the case with workflow. So the point is this knowledge management is a big deal anywhere ok. So now people are trying to see taking uh, brackets from 30 years old there is a company where uh, we are trying to work they have like 30, 30 year old bracket it is the same bracket but it has evolved the design has evolved and for 30 years they have used the bracket in that particular area ok. Now what they are trying to do is, is doing a backward kind of an engineering to understand how this design evolved because there are about 6 managers who have changed in 30 years and they do not know why a particular fillet was introduced and all changes has resulted in optimization and better performance there is no doubt but they are trying to understand the design evolution. Now they are using database techniques to understand the design evolution ok. So because there is so much of data from their side to understand that ok. So the simulation helps <coughs> so structured experimentation with the study of outcomes and what you are going to do with the outcomes will help you here ok and Georgie Box is a is a big statistician ok is a very big statistician who has introduced a lot of uh, design of experiment techniques, statistical techniques everything he is like Fisher, Fisher is uh, Fisher information matrix if you know he is like Fisher he is a big guy ok. Yeah so what he says is to find out what happens to a system when you interfere with it you have to interfere with it not passively observe it you cannot wait for 100 years for a rare event to happen if you want to understand what under a rare con I mean rare input conditions what happens you will have to perform it to understand what happens ok. So this is this graph is important because this is similar to your finite element the truth is like this ok but this is what your experiment tells you uh, probably you could have done a little better maybe it was like this but still you might not be able to capture the truth because the truth is something that you do not know. So always what we try to do is, is it is not enough if you get a representation you also should have some information on how far you are from the actual because it is only an approximation it is ok an approximation is ok but how far it is from the approximation is a good question ok. So we experiment we observe then we conclude this is a cycle of course <coughs> what we are trying to do we have already seen y equal to f of x a well defined experiment will take you very close to your knowledge curve. <coughs> the whole idea is to get some insight into the process or product please understand you are not trying to find this and then go and say this is the optima yes you can still do it but your overall idea is to get some insight into the process or product. And then based on this output you can go and tweak your inputs so that you can change it to your target values that is in one sense that is also optimization. But there is a small problem with uh, screening this is called the design space screen ok. Uh, there is a curse of dimensionality something that we discussed just a while ago about finding gradient how do you find gradients in a numerical sense I do finite difference ok. How many points do you need for finite difference I need if I am using central difference I need 3 points 1 point delta x my positive delta x negative delta x this is for 1 dimension for 2 dimensions how many points you need I will need 5 points for n dimensions it will increase in that sense. Similarly if you want to do integration I will do some trapezoidal rule or I will use some Runge Kutta approach something like that when you increase the dimensions you cannot handle this situation. So that is called curse of dimensionality when the dimension increases most of your classical techniques will stop or choke. The same is this idea is people kind of want to understand how your response varies in the design domain. So what they do is, is simply they try to compute their gradient ok. If your function is going like this ok it is kind of a uniform slope. So if you get the gradient information at different points it will show you like this. So you know that it is a linear function you just need only 3 points to approximate it done. But the pro that is the idea that is given in this particular slide if you see it says dou f by dou x sorry dou f by dou x equal to 0 
meaning the gradient information for all x belonging to the design domain the variable x i can be safely neglected it says x is it is not sensitive anymore meaning y is not sensitive to x because when you change x that is what it says when you change x you get 0. Similarly, if it is a constant that is the example that I gave you, but not equal to 0, then the effect of the variable is linear and it is an additive model, you can do it as an additive model. In case here it is given as a function g of x i, okay. so it, it could be a nonlinear function also, it is not a linear function anymore for all x belonging, where g of x is not a constant because if it is a constant then it is a previous case. Okay then f is non-linear in terms of x i this is something that you can tell this is an interesting part g of x i for all where this g of x i is not constant x i x j everything is not a constant then f, f is non-linear in x i and involved in interactions with x j that is important okay. So, this is taking together here it is taking one at a time g of x1, g of x2, g of x3 like that. Here we are taking g of x1, x2, x3. So, there is a difference between the third and the fourth. Okay, There is interactions are also involved in this particular case. So, but getting this is not easy because you do not have the, you have the function f then it is okay. Somewhere you can do all these things. The point is you do not have this function. I told you just for getting this information you need 3 for a point please understand this is not for the entire function 3 for a point you tell me 10 points 30 information I need to give you that is not easy ok. So, typically you cannot get the sensitivity info uh, but then you expect the model to be uniformly accurate across the design space that is also not ok. Such a property where you want to get the information is called a space filling property ok because I do not know how the function varies and I cannot favor a particular. Yeah. So, now someone walks into my room let us say and then they say select one of the students we will send them to a conference. I am just saying some dean comes in and then he says we chose your class and uh, there is some conference we will sponsor one student select one of the students and let us assume that these three are not my students otherwise I am naturally biased. So, I do not know, I do not know any of you right. So, similarly these three also I do not know, they walked into my room and they said choose one of those students I will, we will send them. I cannot choose because I have no information on who you are, how you perform, why you should go to this conference, will you benefit out of this conference, I have no information ok. So, unless I have those information. <coughs> I cannot say that let us put 40 percent of the points here and the remaining points we will use it here, I cannot say that. So, you expect the model to be uniformly accurate or uniformly varying across the design space that is what you should do. So, there are two meanings to this particular statement ok, one is I have used the word model, but it also useful for it is can also be used for function, you, are, you expect the function to be uniformly accurate then the model that you build also should be uniformly accurate, you cannot say at that point it is not very accurate, but at this point it is ok. That is allowed provided you know this is your zone of interest. If you do not know anything then you cannot say ok I built a function which is not accurate there, that that place you cannot use the function, you can use it at any other place ok. Unless you have a bias you should not do that, bias means you know then you have the knowledge of that ok. So, your model your sampling plan also should govern that, that is important unless you have bias why will you only choose few points the, it should be uniformly distributed uniformly distributed in the sense not uniform distribution uh, not uh, not uniform sampling ok in terms of information sense in terms of uh, locating the design uh, design of experiment points there should be some kind of a space fillingness what is this space fillingness given the 10 points I want to explore this come goes back to your visitor example ok given the 20 points I should explore as much as I can within the design space. So, there are different types of experimentation of course, one is the trial and error ok, there are some advantages and disadvantages of that which in a scientific sense this will not work ok, it is a quick band aid fix and all that is fine. There is another one which is called the one factor at a time 
what this says is you change only one factor you freeze the other factors. This is great it gives you some idea about a factor, but you have to do at least two experiments per factor please understand and it only gives you a linear relationship ok. It could be a non-linear in x1, but you do two points it will only give you a linear relationship it also does not take into account your correlations because you are fixing x2, x3, x5, xn. So, if you change x7 what happens to this x1 it might not remain the same. So, it, it is partially only helpful, but uh, if you do not have anything one factor at a time is a great thing to do. The classical uh, what you call like um, Taguchi techniques based OA and all that has taken a back seat as of now in non manufacturing applications especially with the days with the design of computer uh, design and analysis of computer experiments is statistically designed ok. So, what happens is how do you ensure the space willingness ok. So, there is some small factor and then they do a uh, minimizing the maximum distance between any two points. So, there is a criteria that you want to maximize or minimize and you will get a value out of it. The interesting point of the statistical design is you rerun that algorithm you will get another set of points. So, the points that he got will not be the same points that I got and the points that I got will not be the same points that he got which means that value it could be a local optima if you can get an function of that phi or theta that we are talking about it could have multiple optima ok and it is also dependent on the points that you start with ok. So, this is an interesting point and this is why it is interesting so why is it interesting sir every time you are getting different values then how can we uh, reproduce the results. This captures nature that is why people say that you should introduce randomness as early as possible in your design because in reality it is random ok. See I manufacture a auto I mean automobile and then I say uh, I can only give it to good drivers can I sell a vehicle like that. I have no control on who will buy my vehicle and run it anyone who pays 1 lakh rupees can buy my vehicle. I cannot say oh that guy is 18 years old he could be a rash driver I cannot give it to him this guy looks like a sadhu so I will sell it to him you cannot do all that anyone who gives you 1 lakh rupees you will have to sell your automobile. So, now the point is with a guy who rides it at about 40 kilometers per hour and there is a guy who rides at about 80 kilometers per hour will suddenly raise it will suddenly drop it will hold it uh, harsh. I will have to bring all this variability up front in my design so that I can tune my engine accordingly. Otherwise I say that no 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 this automobile was designed for Chennai you cannot go and ride it in Bangalore because the temperatures are different you cannot say that it should today they are they are you know like putting engines inside dust chambers dust chambers ok and then they are with a circular fan they are putting dust inside and then it is doing it after like 12 hours of dust exposure they take it out and then they are checking whether the links are working. Then again they expose it to another 6 hours of dust they are taking it. So, I cannot say that this will be this will run only in tar roads who knows. I will buy it and then I will take it to a village and ride it, but still the vehicle should ride and then where you do not have tar roads there is it is exposed to dust. So, you sh it should. So, the point is you should bring all these random conditions up front and this is one of the cases. I am designing it in a random sense. So, I will do two different design of experiments and I will see if I come to the same conclusion. I should come to the same conclusion you cannot say I will have two riders and the efficiency will go down no it cannot it cannot vary too much of course it will vary a little bit but it cannot vary too much. This is a historical perspective it is very interesting someone started with a cure for cure uh, like a particular like a disease kind of a stuff then actually it had this this is the guy that I spoke about Fisher he is a big guy in design of experiments ok. But as you can see it actually picked up in the modern era between 71 90 where they wanted to do quality products uh, 
during and at the end of World War II. Okay, it it actually started during World War II. Okay, because they wanted to very quickly do it. In World War II, you cannot say, okay, write a proposal. Let's <laughs> let's import a vehicle and then let's do it. You cannot do that, right? It has to be done quickly. So that is the uh, biggest advantage of this Taguchi stuff. From the outcome, you can directly you can identify and then you can control factor analysis and all that. That's the biggest advantage of that. You can see it actually started in agriculture and then it's it started going. Okay, even today. If you want to do soil quality check, okay, they do not go and dig it in a land and then bring it. Okay. There is a scheme which is a very nice design of experiment. You have to dig it in the four corners, you will have to dig it in the center of the entire um, thing that you want to do. You will have to mix it, mix all the soil together, you will have to sieve multiple times. Then again there is another experimentation, you will have to bring and mix from other another four points and then only you, they will give you a soil quality. Okay, you cannot just go dig into one point and then go and give it, right, that, it that will become a local effect. So, you will have to do, there is a particular way in which you will have to sieve all of them, filter meaning filter and then again you will have to mix them, then again sieve and then only you will have to go and give it. So, it actually started in different applications as you can see. Uh, so, this is about, um, this is called a P diagram. So, if you look at it, what they are saying is, this is your output y1, y2 this is your key control parameters x1, x2 which we usually call the design variables, right. These are the independent variable, this guy is a dependent variable. Something that we do not discuss and slightly out of scope for us is this guy which is called the key noise parameter, okay, which I do not have control. I design a wind turbine, okay, and the wind turbine is dependent on the wind speeds, I know that, but do I have control on the wind speeds? I design a automobile for my client, do I have control on my client? I cannot go right to my client, <laughs> do not drive fast, you should drive slow, you know, do not go this, slow, 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 slowly go over the, otherwise the suspension will go off, you do not have control on that. I write a book, do I have control on who reads the book? But that is the problem with students, right? They write a paper, okay, they do not imagine that it will be read by anyone. They think it is the professor's headache to wet it out. So, I need to think is this x1 or x2, which plot is this, we need to read all that and we need to have our own inferences about that, okay. Anyway, fine. So, this key noise parameter is something out of scope for us, but this is the general p diagram that we have. And then you set your parameter, you fix your inputs. This is the process that we are trying to approximate. This example is for a slightly different example on uh, slightly different course on robust design, okay. So, but what you are trying to do is, is any experiment whether computational or physical is to determine your output as a function of input, sorry it is here already, x is your input, y is your output, we are going to do f hat which is your approximation, okay. Uh, these are the key definitions, we will not use too much of this, the response is your output variable which is your y. The factor is what we call the design variables. In Taguchi orthogonal array, it is called factor, and the values that it can take is called level. It is here, this level and factors are. So, if you take temperature for instance as a factor, it can take 42 degrees, it can take 36 degrees, these are called two levels. But in the days, what you will do is, is temperature and then you will give some bounds, that is all, okay. Then replication, this becomes important, this is what I told. I do two different design of experiments, I should arrive at the same conclusion, otherwise there is a problem, okay. So, I should be able to replicate it. Interaction becomes important. Now, people are saying like, you know, like what is, that is what data now you are trying to do, okay. For instance, uh, cancer research, the problem is because there are so many factors that you do not know, okay. So, you, they are still trying to identify factors that contribute, okay. Now, you have a list of factors and you have a list of attributes and then you have a list of responses. The interesting part is you need to find out which interacts with the other to give that case. So, there is an interaction between these guys and there is an interaction with respect to your output also. So, that is why cancer research is very difficult and the problem is, I do not know, did anyone uh, listen to this? Uh, Doubly, there is this one guy called uh, Vidyasagar Muttukamali. He came Indian, 
the controls conference. They conducted and then he gave a talk here on, he is an electrical engineer where he has used factor analysis and all that to the core and currently he is doing cancer research. So, it is a very interesting talk. What I learned from the talk is why this is very challenging is you have a cancer site let us say, you take 3 cells from the cancer site and each and each of them have a different characteristic. So, there is no pattern, otherwise by the time <laughs> our people would have broken all the thing right, because we are so matured now in pattern recognition and data mining, you cannot do any of those stuff. For each person, why even each person, for each site is it is different, the characteristics are different, you cannot go with a particular attribute value. So, there is an issue ok. So, that is when the interaction becomes very important, what is the correlation between x1 and x2 and how does it affect y. And for you to capture this you need lot of data, that is one problem in our context like in cancer research we do not have that much data, we have lot of cases, but we do not have a nice data logging system ok. And randomization is required to remove bias, why ASME says sorry ASTM standard says that you need to do 3 at least at different uh, design points to do your SN curve is also to avoid bias ok. So, in order to avoid bias we need to do random designs ok. This is a general DO, DOE workflow. So, the deal is you this is like a general design of a, I mean new product development equivalent ok. Identify you will have to identify the problem clearly you will have to state the objectives what your hypothesis are, you will have to identify your variables x1, x2, you will have to identify. So, this becomes important because at this point it is the trivial many, from that you will have to go to the vital few ok. So, you say what all is responsible, then you take it from there to here, select the factors few and then you define your factor levels or you say these are the bounds I will use it as this distribution. You do your design of experiment, run your experiments and then you can you can do whatever you want ok, study your hypothesis, fit a surrogate and all that. I will wrap it up here.